Hello yet again. Welcome back to Illegally Sighted. This is Jesse, aka BGFH. I am back for what should be the finale of Shenmue. Um, had quite the eventful day. Um, well, night, day, and another night. Uh, we started the video with uh, thought we were going to bed, only to discover that the Mad Angels got a little bit crazy. Um, they said they were going to go after my friends and family. They did. They kidnapped Nozomi. Uh, I had a little bit of difficulty getting... Uh, we got to ride a motorcycle from Dubuita to the harbor. Um, eventually got there in the end. Um, <clears throat> did a little battle there. And then the next day we actually got fired because we've been causing too much mischief trouble in the harbor um, found out Tom is leaving so every major character Naomi's going to Canada Tom is going to the United States uh, you got the weirdo um, what's his name um, Goro he's I guess getting hitched going straight and go, getting hitched with that younger sister person that we tried to talk out of getting into trouble earlier in the game so yeah, everything is kind of starting to tie itself up here, so here we go. Uh, we saved the game, and we are going to go to sleep and see what the heck happens next. We we try, We were agreed to uh, break Quizon's legs in order to get at Terry, and instead we had a 70-man battle. 70-man battle. That was kind of crazy. Okay, and I guess we're doing stuff. Hmm. Well, you go, son. Oh, we've got our backpack and everything. Here, it's for you. From Ine son, and it's not much, but from me. Oh. Cook, son. Take care, and come back in one piece. Yeah, I'd love to. It's kind of sad. I really i am going to miss this, uh, miss Japan. You know, going back and forth in Dubuita and the dojo. Take one good look at home. There's our house. We had our house bowing to Fuksan. I got my backpack. I'm really doing it. And there's Ine son around the corner. She's crying. But she's like, well, I can't stop him. Oh, so many memories. Again, just playing through this... Uh, the first time I played this game, you know, you were looking at the, the gate to the Hazuki residence, walking down the street where you found the cat, panning up to the sky. Yep. <clears throat> and now we're probably we're okay. We're we yeah we're walking in that one entrance where those two hoodlum girls were, and we're just kind of yeah we're gonna do a little walk through this small area of Japan. This I mean literally it's a very small area. It's compact, but there were so you know you have all these stores in there. You've got the the bar dist the night district. You've got the tomato mart. All the clothing and food shops and stores, flower shop, restaurants, we got... And it's literally like the main part is just like kind of a V shape. Yep, there's our no more tapes for us, no more... Still didn't win any games, I still didn't win any uh, that boom box. Stupid thing. I, I just, no matter what I do, I swear to God, no matter how many times I play this game, I'm never going to win. <laughs> but, 
yeah, man, the first time I played this, just this game was so epic. I mean, I know it seems quaint by today. You know, you have the big Grand Theft Auto games. You got the Elder Scrolls games, which are just hours and hours and hours upon hours of stuff. Oh, there's the arcade. The good old arcade games. Man, yep, I'm walking over to the bus stop. Goodbye, Japan. Goodbye, Dabuita. But yeah, I mean, like I said, I know this is small by comparison, but this game, it, it, again, f you gotta look at it when it was out on the Dreamcast. It was amazing. You know, bad voice acting and all. The interaction that you could do. Um... The amount of stuff they packed into these two environments, you know, your first half in Yokosuka and Dubuita, and then the harbor district. Just so much. Your foolishness knows no bounds, eh? <laughs> Thank you for arranging my trip to Hong Kong. Thanks to you, the long jaw was thwarted. It was the least I could do. Oh yeah, we kicked some serious Thank ass Thank you very last much. Night. You're too reckless. It worries me, so... I'm going with you. What do you mean? Cool. I cannot allow you to go alone. Besides, we also need to know what Lan Di is doing. That's the gist of it. The diving swallow style should be useful on your journey. What? A style from the Hebei province in use since the Song Dynasty. I will teach you its most sacred move, the Swallow Flip. <sighs> okay. Yishang. Yes. You utilize okay. your opponent's attack to flip them. First, I will explain the basic form. Watch I, if, I remember, if I remember correctly, I'm not very good at this move. You take one step backwards to parry the opponent's attack. Right. Then focus power in your arms to throw your opponent off balance. Immediately kick their legs out and flip. In actual combat, you'd strike here. The throw alone won't incapacitate your opponent. First, try to execute the proper form. Shift your weight while taking one step back. Right. So, you've acquired the form. Next, as you drop, use your arms to throw your opponent off balance. Well then, give it a try. So, I'm guessing I use my throw? Oh. No. There's no power in your arms. There's no power in your arms. The timing no on power this in your arms. The timing on this just never I never could get it right. Eventually I do, but There's no power in your arms. There's no power in your arms. Okay. So I'm doing it too slow. There's no power in your arms. You're applying too much force. I know what I'm teaching you is very difficult. Do you wish me to explain it again? No. No, I'm fine. Very well. Carry on then. Am I supposed to use both? I don't remember. See, that's the other thing that the VMU did. 
is on There's the dream no power in your arms in the dreamcast if you had enough trouble you would listen to what the guy was saying but then if you kept having trouble you could look down There's at the no vmu display arms. and it would actually show you this like oh this is exactly what buttons you're supposed to hit there's no power in your arms. Are you tired? Do you wish to stop now? Eh, uh, yeah. No, please, let's oh, continue. Oh, okay, well. Very well. Carry on, then. I'll try it one more time. I'm just, I'm, I don't know why I'm not getting this move. There's no power in your arms. See... I don't know exactly what I'm what move I'm supposed to be hitting here. You focused power in your arms too late. Okay, so I'm supposed to be using punch, not grab, okay. You focused power in your arms too late. I know what I'm teaching you is very difficult. Do you wish me to explain it again? No. No, I'm fine. Very well. Carry on, then. Yeah, this one I always had trouble with a little bit. I would... There's no power in your arms. What the hell? There's no power in your arms. Yeah, there is. There's no power in your There's arms. There's no power in your arms. Yeah, huh. we might just say screw it and whatever. I was never good at this attack anyway. Like, I'm not going to use it in battle because I suck at using this particular you attack. You power in your arms too late. Too late, huh? You focused power in your arms too late. Too late, huh? You I don't know. Focused power in your arms too late. I don't Are know. Are you tired? Do you wish to stop now? Yeah, let's stop. Screw it. I got it. Yes. However, I will have no further opportunity to teach you. Are you sure? Uh, yeah, we'll quit. Yes, I will practice on my own. Very well. No doubt you will master it in time. I just don't want to just sit Thank here. Thank you for your guidance. I don't want to sit there on the video just trying to get this stupid move. You must not neglect your training once you have reached Hong Kong. Nope. Yes. Yeah, that one's tricky. But what do we got here? Aren't we forgetting something? Look out! Oh, Kusan, behind you! Yeah! <laughs> You're not going to Hong Kong because the Great Chai will defeat you! The Great Chai! <laughs> this guy's an ass. This guy's tough. Um, this guy also takes some time to kill. Um, he, he, you can't, like... He is so fast, and like I said, I got my ass kicked in the arcade, so... I don't even think throws work on this guy. I think you pretty much just have to, like, brute force this guy. Either punches and kicks and special moves, and I know you're supposed to be able to use that move against him that we just learned. But I'm just always bad at that move, though. Uh-oh. Okay, well, I knocked him down once. Okay. Eh. Okay, kicked him in the face. That's good. Okay, hit him that way. Uh oh, no, you're not gonna throw me. Oh. Okay, he knocked me down. Okay, got him there. Okay. That's this is why I didn't just continue with the last video, because I didn't know how many times it would take me to kill this prick. Especially with the way that I've been failing some of the other things so far. So I didn't want to be like, oh, well, now we're going to spend an hour trying to kill this douche. 
The Great Chai. Legs seem to work pretty well against him. Alright, alright. No way. What are you doing here? Where's Landy? Okay, we still gotta be careful. Landy is sailing the sea. Landy bound for Hong Kong. So, Landy's already left for Hong Kong. Uh, there's another quick time event, isn't there? I'm almost positive. Yeah. There we go. Mr. Robes himself, he's got that big old fancy... That is a cool looking robe though, I gotta admit. Or jacket, or whatever the heck you want to call that. Cloak, whatever, I don't know. But yeah, he he didn't... Ju he just left, so you, you're not too far behind him, but yeah, we just missed him. Alrighty, so... I, but I think we have one more little hurrah to, to do. I'm just trying to remember when it happens. I hit down. Yeah. Uh -huh. And that, yeah, like I said, you fail it, boom. Uh. Okay. <laughs> oh, B. Wow. <laughs> With this, I can join the G you mean. Yeah. Uh huh. Show you a couple fail states there. I, I always like just how crazy this guy gets because he's so acrobatic. drink. Into the drink. You cannot travel injured. Yeah, big old pipe thing fault. fell on him. Don't when... worry. This injury will heal soon. Go on ahead. Guisa. <laughs> Don't worry about my son. At the moment, I don't know where Ju Yuenda is. Instead, I will introduce you to someone I know can be trusted. Tao Li Shou, one of Hong Kong's elder masters. The address is in there. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. We should could have got to see Master Chen fight. Grab your backpack. Yeah, he's just, I mean, he's literally traveling light. Just you know, close, on, close on your uh, body, backpack, and whatever you can fit in there, and that's it. Climbing up the steps to the boat. Yep, uh, the big old boat that's been sitting at the harbor the whole time. Yep, that's what's going to be taken off here in just a moment. Oh yeah, the flashback. Forgot about this. Nezomi. Nezomi. Oh, Ryo. <laughs> I scared you? No, just spooked. You know, it's kind of funny. Funny? See, I was just making a wish for you. And you suddenly appeared. A wish for me? You are going to Hong Kong, aren't you? How did you know? I finally made Fukusan tell me. 
You've been so preoccupied lately. Is that so? Uh. I won't stop you. I know you well enough to know I can't. Here, take this amulet. I'm hoping it will keep you safe. At least that's what I've been wishing and willing it to do. Mizumi. I'm so glad I was able to give it to you. I've been so busy lately. Getting ready to return to Canada. I... Oh yeah, you're leaving for Canada soon. Well, I gotta go home. Yeah, well, be careful. Okay. We're both leaving Japan. I wish we had more time. Come on, say it. Ah. Oh. That's a pretty big cruise ship there. Pretty big, uh, pretty big vessel. And, uh, minus the last cutscene or so here, uh, that is Shenmue 1, ladies and gentlemen. Hit a few trouble spots here and there, but you know what? We, we did it. We eventually, we got there. We are leaving Japan behind. Again, it seems it's still really cool, but you know, it seems a little more quaint than it did back then. But like when I finished this game, it was like the first time I was like, "Oh my god!" This was like the most epic game I'd ever played. Full voice acting. I mean, it felt like a movie in a lot of ways. You know, just with like the camera cuts and the cutscenes and the quick times and stuff like that. You know, again, fully voiced. Um, just the, the in-depth way you could explore the world. He comes from a far eastern land across the ocean. A young man who has yet to realize his own potential. This potential is a power that can both destroy him as well as ensure his will is realized. Perhaps he will achieve the balance that will mark him a man of courage the path he must traverse is fraught with adversity and filled with expectations. I await whilst praying for the realization of this destiny predetermined since ancient times. A pitch black night unfolds with morning star as its only light. And thus, yes, the saga begins. begins. <laughs> There you guys go. Um, so remember in the first video, I think I had mentioned, uh, there is a little, who is she? When will we find out? So speaking of her in the first video, remember I said that, that there was that speech that if you let it on the title screen, it would kind of play this little intro animation. And she, it would, you know, it'd show some different uh, visuals and stuff, like she's on a mountaintop and whatnot. Uh, but she would, re she would say that speech. So you guys didn't see that in the beginning, but uh, that is the same speech that she would give uh, that you just heard from that guy narrating at the end there. 
Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, so as we go through the credits here, um, just give I'll, I'll just give my few uh, final thoughts here. Playing this, I wouldn't call it a remaster, but you know at least a re-release, kind of a remaster, I suppose. Uh, but again, playing this, this came out in what 2000. God, 18 years old for God's sake, that's insane. <laughs> but like I said, I, this game was so epic back in the day. Like, I saw some original footage of it. Uh, back when, you know, I was in college, and unless you were on a university or something like that, people still had dial-up um, back then. Cable internet was not that common. Um, but I was in college, and, you know, like, they would have these little crappy, like, you know, remember the old, like, real player videos and stuff like that, or just the low-res stuff that we had to deal with back then? Uh... <laughs> It's amazing going from what we had then to what we have now. I can literally talk and just stream HD content over the internet. It's freaking nuts. But when this came out, like I said, I saw some like footage of it. There had, you know, I read a lot of articles and just like what this game was trying to promise. Uh, I was fascinated by it. Just like, hey, this was an RPG that was about martial arts, which I'm really interested in. I've been fascinated with that kind of stuff. And it's not a turn-based. It's not Final Fantasy. It's not... You know, I know people love Final Fantasy. I know they love Chrono Trigger. I know they love all those types of things. And I've just never gotten into the turn-based combat. Uh, so... When this... Can, and it's like, oh, you can walk around the world and everything is like real-time. People have schedules... You're using basically a spin off of this Virtua Fighter fighting engine. That's how you do your combat. Um, it's just like, I have to play this game. I have to play it. And then when I play, I, I got it on the Dreamcast. I was going to college at the time. And oh boy, that first time I, like I said, that summer, I had. I don't remember when it when did it come out. I can't remember if it came out in the f fall. I think I like within the, within the first six months. I think I played this game three times because I had to ring every little bit of like cutscene. I was looking up things on the internet on forums like, oh, did you know if you visited this person at this time or if you skipped this step? Like I wanted to hear all the little incidental dialogue and like I was obsessed with this game for like six months and I like the first time I played this I there were a few skipped classes let's put it that way I'm, I'm just like no I have no I, I have to play this game uh, this world is just sucking me in it's you know <laughs> yeah like I said I know the char some of the characters are really wooden um, the way Ryu reacts to especially Nozomi some of the characters and like I said a lot of the English voice acting is laughably bad at, at best but in a way looking back again it's like well someone actually dared to you know put full voice acting in and before they really standardize like oh hey we're actually gonna get professional voice actors in the way that they do now um it, you know, yeah it was just it was a game ahead of its time and um just going back listening to all the cheesy dialogue and stuff I'm kind of like I'm glad that the game has been brought to modern consoles in its basically original form other than having a few widescreen and graphical tweaks here and there because it kind of adds to the charm <laughs> it really does um, it's like the Resident Evil remakes. Like, they cleaned up some of the dialogue, and it was better for it, but part of me really just wants to play the original cut and just listen to the, I am talking like this, and you should not go down this hallway. I mean, <laughs> the master of unlocking. I mean, come on. Like, it's priceless. Like, it's a product of its time. It's classic. Um, and, and like I said, what I also loved about Shenmue was that it was grounded in this reality story. I mean, okay, you have these weird dragon mirrors. I don't know what the heck they're supposed to do. Um, but like the vast majority of this game was just a, a kid, a teenage guy, you know, trying to avenge his father's murder. 
Uh, you know, his dad got murdered in front of him. He ran a dojo, so he had some. He had a reason to know martial arts. I mean, granted, like I said, everybody major character you meet, I'm surprised Naomi didn't teach you a martial art move because, like I said, everybody in Japan, according to this game, must know some sort of martial arts. But, um, but that was what was so cool. It wasn't like, oh, I, it, it wasn't really saving the world. Uh, it was a story about, you know, exploring your hometown and, like, you know, you know these, you you get the feeling, you know, I mean, Ryu knew these characters while growing up um, in this tale of revenge and everything was really grounded. You actually went to real places, real stores, got in street fights, some guys had weapons, some didn't. You got chases, drove a forklift, drove a motorcycle. Um, you know, you could, and you could just, you know, collect little figures and go to the convenience store and feed a cat and, um, just all these little things, you know, play darts, play some classic, couple classic Sega arcade games. Uh, and the, where it kind of missed me a little bit was this chai, you know? They mentioned this weird kind of demon thing, which obviously has something to do probably with these mirrors or something, some of this mystical. I kind of wish that they kept that out of the game. I mean, you can have a mysterious, badass, bad guy antagonist. You can have that without, you know, without making this mystical whatever uh, that's going to be happening in Shenmue 2 and 3, whatever is going to happen. Um, I, I just, I kind of wish they would have kept it exclusively in reality. Like, you know, you don't have to go, you do not have to go to this weird, like I said, this chai demon. Um, I don't know, I, I just really wish that that's the one kind of not really atmosphere, but that's the one kind of story. And it's a minor story at that. I mean, there's no explanation. Where did where did this Chai thing come from? How did he get summoned? Where is he from? Uh, he just fell in the water, so he's probably not dead. Um, but, like, you know, he literally, he spied on you on the roof that one time. He kicked your ass in the arcade. And then he just comes back to the very end of the game, which I'm surprised I beat that guy in the first try. I was actually surprised at how easily I whooped him. Um, but there wasn't really much context to him. So, like, it was a kind of a fun fight, but I just, in a way, I don't know that he really had to be there. Um, like I said, I'm curious to know what is going on with these mirrors. Landy's got one, I've got one, and I know sort of what happens throughout and at the end of Shenmue 2, so I'm very intrigued to see what the heck is going on with Shenmue 3 when it comes out in August 2019, if it does. Now, I, have, I can save the game, which I just did, and now, uh, I should be able to carry all my saves and moves and stuff into Shenmue 2. Now, I'm going to let it sit here because I will, because I'm on this title screen, I think it will eventually go to that initial cutscene where, where, where you will be able to see... Yeah, here we go. I'll let you watch this. So you'll hear that same speech but from this uh, mysterious character who you don't even meet in this game so you're like what is going on here and remember when this game was in development this was going to be a six title game a six game series I'll talk a little bit more about he that in a minute appear from a far eastern land across the sea a young man who has yet to know his potential This potential is a power that could either destroy him or realize his will. His courage shall determine his fate. 
the path he must traverse fraught with adversity, I await whilst praying. For this destiny predetermined since ancient times. A pitch black night unfolds with the morning star as its only light. And thus the saga begins. So there you go. I like her narration a bit better. Now, one last thing that I wanted to check on. Um, but, like, what I was saying is that when this was in development, like, uh, Yu Suzuki, the guy that was, you know, that's behind this series, uh, he intended this to be this, like, you know, if the Dreamcast would have not sadly, sadly met its end far too soon... That's a whole other topic, in my opinion. But, uh, you know, the Dreamcast and just Sega getting out of the hardware thing in general. This was meant to be a six-game series. He had, the, I mean, he had this whole story kind of planned out, this whole story arc. So what ended up happening is Shenmue 1 is basically Chapter 1. And when they actually did Shenmue 2, if I rem if I recall correctly, uh, Shenmue 2 was actually chapters 2 and 3. And I want to say that I read some fairly recent article or interview or something with him that was saying Shenmue 3... Uh, he still would like it to be. I don't think Shenmue 3 is going to be the end either. I think he's seeing it. He, I want to say that I read somewhere where he's like, it may be a four part. Ultimately, like ideally, he would like it to be even still a five part series. So there's a lot of story here still. Um, so that is Shenmue. But before we wrap up, there's one other thing I want to see. Uh, new game options. Oh, we do! Yeah, 70 man battle. Okay, you know what? We're doing this really quick. Um, if I. If I. I mean, I, I probably will fail this, but see now, I don't have. I don't have anybody else with me. It's just me. No Kui No Kui Zan, so. This, I want, oh, I'm so glad they included this. Um, I should also check and see if they have, like, the... I don't think they have the passport stuff that was on the fourth disc, where... Um, what they would have on the fourth disc, they had the 70-man battle once you beat the game. But then they also had, like, different characters in the game. Because, you know, th again, this game was cutting-edge graphics for the time, like... The realistic, uh, you know, the realism in their faces and, like, you know, the way they would show their the hair and the beards and eyes and stuff like that. Um, uh, like, I think Naizomi, they, there was these little videos and, the like, Naizomi, I think, was talking about all the little side things that you could do, like collecting capsule toys, playing in the arcade, whatever. Um, and then there was there was talking one talking about like the weather system. Uh, there was one that was talking about like the different fighting moves. Um, I forget who who did what, but I, I mean Tom was one. Um, there was an, one of the old guys I think was talking about the martial arts moves. I want to say there were like five or six videos that would you know it was just kind of like a overview of the world because again this was like beyond what a lot of people had actually seen back in the day so we'll see how far I get here um, I have a feeling if, like this guy probably won't do me in but um, hey you want to knock that off real quick um but what if I fail, like, I'm not going to do this again until I beat it. Like, you, essentially, you just beat it like, you know, you would the regular game. Except I don't have, you know, I'm doing this all myself, so I'm not getting any assistance 
from Kuizan fighting any of the minions. Like, I still have to fight the bosses in the other one, but... Um, nope, it's just me and 70-man battle. I remember taking turns in the dorm. Like, this was just the coolest thing. It's like, oh, dude, it's like a, a 3D double dragon. You know, there was other 3D brawlers around the N64 era, but they were freaking terrible. There was like, what is it called? Final Fight Double Impact, I think. There was a... God, there was a few attempts at like a 3D brawler where it wasn't just side-scrolling, but it was more open like this. And it was... They were, they were always just bad. I wanted to like them. I rented a couple on the N64. I think the Dreamcast had a couple of them. On the PS2 or Xbox, they made like a 3D NARC. Uh, Narc was this kind of, well, that was, nah, it was more shooting, I guess, but it had, like, melee, and it was just a weird freaking game, but, yeah, there were attempts to bring that kind of thing to the modern era, but it didn't work. You know, things like Double Dragon Neon, that was a good ver, that was fun. Okay, this dick here, I hate this guy. Uh, but Double Dragon Neon was good. Um, Scott Pilgrim, although it's no longer available on the store, uh, that actually was a pretty good beat em up on the Xbox Live Arcade. But other than that, it's been kind of. You know, Double Dragon 4, I just recently released that video for you guys, and I didn't mind it in the beginning, but then what do I. You know, every time I talk about Double Dragon. Oh, and I'm dead. <laughs> okay. Uh. Nope. Don't care. Um, you know, every time you start by you start fighting, but then you get halfway through the game or three quarters through the the game, and then it comes into this really shitty platforming and little traps and combinations and stuff, and it's just oh, why do you do that? Why do you do that? Yeah, so it doesn't look like we have the passport videos. I can't show you those unless it's under. I uh, no, I don't think it's under options. I'm pretty sure now. Now we're not getting any. Holy crap, there's a lot of options in here though. Um, unless it's. Um. Nope. Alrighty, well, you know what? We're going to wrap it up there. Um, that is the full playthrough for Shenmue. Um, apologize, we had to switch from streaming to recording there a good chunk of the way through the game, and so a lot, some of the uh, video lengths are going to be a bit uneven, but, you know, you live, you learn, you try new things for the channel, you try new things for the stream... Sometimes they work great, and sometimes you have little glitches, and you just kind of have to adapt on the fly. But nevertheless, um, this will eventually all be going up onto YouTube, and that's where you're watching this, obviously, right now. Uh, so yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the series. I certainly did. Um, I, again, I, I will for sure do a spotlight video for Shenmue 2. Um, there are things I like about Shenmue 2 better about than I do Shenmue 1, but there are also some things I just don't quite get into as much with Shenmue 2, and I know a lot of people like Shenmue 2 better than 1, but there's just something, you know, something again about this Japan that I really like in the first game, and so I, I, I just don't know, I haven't really decided if I really want to do a full playthrough of... Shenmue, Shenmue 2 on the channel. I'll for sure do a spotlight and highlight some differences from Shenmue 1 to 2, but I don't know if I'm going to do a full playthrough unless people really, really, really want it. But um, again, I just I don't know that I will, but we'll see. Anyway, that is Shenmue. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I had a blast. I'm certainly glad. I've actually been wanting this to come to modern systems for some time. It finally happened, and I've played it again. So, can't wait for Shenmue 3 next year. Hope you guys enjoyed the series. 
like the videos if you did, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter at BGFH79. I upload videos every Wednesdays and every Wednesday and Saturday, sometimes more, and I, and I will let you know when uh, on my Twitter feed when I do at BGFH79. And I do a little bit of streaming on Mixer, mixer.com slash BGFH. And I will also let you know on Twitter when I a little bit before I go live there. So again, yep, hope you guys enjoyed it. Till next time, I'll talk to you guys later.